Hi guys, this is Zach from Watches on You, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Rolex GMT Master Root Beer circa 1971, and this is specifically the reference 1675, which is not to be confused with the 16750 as this watch has a few things that the other a few differences from the other piece where the 16750 has a sapphire crystal as this one has an acrylic and there are a few different differences between the two so going back to this model now first off I'm gonna go over the history of the Rolex GMT master the GMT master was actually originally made for Pan Am airline pilots that wanted a watch that could track multiple time zones as obviously being a pilot they're gonna be traveling between time zones and they wanted one where they can track both where they either exist where I mean where they are at the time and their home time from where they're from or their base airport or they could have other time zones depending on what they what suits their needs so rolex made the gmt master and since then it is i mean basically exploded in popularity it be soon became the most one of the most if not the most popular gmt watch out there and G and rolex later made up with some new variants including this which is the known as the root beer because of its coloration so the root beer, the elements that are distinct to this piece are the bezel, which has a kind of a goldish brown upper half, and then kind of a little bit goldish, but more um, silvery bottom half with then brown, so that goldish brown indicators, and then the opposite color for the indicators up on the top of the bezel. Now also on the dial, you get this beautiful brown kind of tropical colored dial that looks absolutely fantastic. And this piece actually has what's known as the nipple dial, which as you can see on the indicators, right all the way around, they actually, the reason it's called that is because people believe that they look like nipples and you can actually definitely see why. So the case on this piece is the classic Rolex sports watch case. This watch is gonna have polished sides on both sides and then you're going to have brushing on the tops of the lugs now the one thing about rolex vintage models is they are a lot less hefty than their modern counterparts and you can definitely see that they're also quite a bit thinner i mean if you just look at the thickness of this watch the main case is so much thinner than its modern equivalent and that's actually one aspect i like however i will say that their vintage models their heft also makes them feel they're not necessarily lower quality, but they feel a little lower quality than their modern counterparts. Now, one other thing that's distinctive between a vintage Rolex versus a modern Rolex are the spring bars, which as you can see, these are traditional kind of just push through pins versus the new ones which use true spring bars. And it's they're hidden from view. So that's another interesting thing to take note of. Now also the bezel on, I mean sorry, the bracelet on this piece is different than its modern counterparts. Now it uses the president bracelet with a gold inner links and then steel outer links as this is a two-tone piece. And it definitely does not feel, I, it, this, this bracelet definitely does not feel as high quality as the modern. And that's mostly due to the fact that it has folded inner links. So that brings the weight down a lot and it also brings its kind of, I guess, sturdiness down a bit as well, but that was common on all Rolex President bracelets, and it's not like something that's bad on this individual piece. So the clasp also is, again, it's quite different from the modern. It's a simple pull open. There is no safety on this piece, and again, it's got pressed metal clasps instead of the new kind of solid bar design, and again, it doesn't feel as high quality, but Rolex, it was really, this was basically the best you could, some of the, they did still have some of the best ba bracelets and bands that you could get at the time for sure. So now I'm going to move on deeper into the dial and the bezel. So the dial, as you can see, it's got a minute hand right there, an hour hand there, and that's your GMT hand. Now the GMT hand runs on 24 hour time, so that's definitely something you need to take note of, but it's actually very easy to, to remember that by just looking at the bezel, because the bezel is in 24 hour time, so therefore you can recognize that the GMT hand is in 24 hour time as well. Now, one thing that's cool about Rolex not only having a GMT hand, but also using the rotatable bezel, is that because it's got a rotatable bezel, instead of actually just being able to track two time zones, you can track three. By, and the way you do that is you set the hour hand, 
and the GMTN is different times. That just gives you your two separate time zones. But then by spinning the bezel, you can actually kind of add a third time zone by simply chain by showing where, say, the 12 hour mark is in that third time zone. And that one obviously is going to be a little bit harder to read than by just the times on displayed on either the minute or the hour hand, but it still gives you that capability, which can be very nice at times. So, moving back to the dial, now you also have a date wheel here at 3 o'clock, and you can actually see, I love how it, they have this on the old Rolex models, that you can actually see that it's like, it's a metal. It's not actually just a straight printed kind of plastic piece. It actually is metal with the numbers on it. And I find that very, very interesting. And I really like the look of it as it just gives it a bit of a more unique aspect to the piece. So now one other thing I mentioned earlier was the acrylic crystal. So the acrylic crystal, as I'm sure most of you know, is going to be a lot softer than a um, sapphire or mineral glass crystal as it is actually a form of plastic. Now what that actually provides is it provides a very, very unique feel. It definitely does not feel like glass. It feels like plastic. It's stronger than just typical plastic, so it's not necessarily going to break on you that easily. But it will scratch up a lot easier than traditional crystal. But one thing I actually like about the acrylic is I have found... Now, you can see glare on this piece, but I found that sometimes it doesn't show it glare quite as much. It kind of depends on the piece. But also what I like is it, I feel like sometimes it brings the, changes the dial tones to kind of just a more warmer tone that I generally like better. I have a vintage um, Omega Seamaster from the 60s. It has a acrylic crystal, and I actually can tell, I think I, I believe that it makes the dial look a little bit more warmer and a little bit nicer than a traditional sapphire or mineral crystal. But that is definitely one thing to take a look at on this piece. Okay, so moving on to the wrist shot here. Um, as you can see, the proportions on this piece, I mean, are very, very nice, especially for a sports watch. It has a very, very nice kind of sporty look, but yet it's thin enough and still classy enough to be easily worn with a suit or other kind of more dressy clothing as due to the thinness of this piece, it will easily be able to glide under a, the cuff of a shirt. Now the bracelet is also extremely comfortable as well. You can see that it molds to the shape of your wrist absolutely perfectly right there. Clasp also, no problems there. I haven't felt any hair pinching on this piece. Rolex is really known to just be very, very comfortable on the wrist and watches that you could wear for hours and hours on end and really not even notice that they're there. So. Overall, this is a very, very interesting piece that you should definitely consider if you're looking for a watch in around the $13,000 price range, as this is going to be a bit more interesting than modern day watches, and actually including the new Root Beer GMT that was re-released at Basel World, as this way you have the vintage aspect and really the roots of Rolex's true brand. And I think that just provides, again, a more unique aspect than a lot of other watches out there in this price range. So please remember to like, subscribe, and share. And I'd like to remind you that we're here at JB Hudson Jewelers. Um, this watch is for sale here, so contact them if you're interested. But thank you guys for watching this video. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you for watching.